They have to go in the parking lot now. Oh, yeah? You won't see them So anymore. they had to wear a fluorescent coat thing with, like, the warning strips. Yeah, that's whatever. if they're panhandling. That's the uniform yeah. they issued. So what about the hookers? Yeah, if you go <laughs> down by <laughs> Wawa. Well, you know the hooker code, too? What's that? You know the hooker code? No. Oh, I'm just asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had the inside scoop on hookers. Well, right down here. The one, the girl on the block, down the block, that's wearing, like... <laughs> well, buy high fish nets. They, there's a house across She's only the street 20 that's just sold, and the neighbor over there every day would have a different hooker from Wawa down there. Before Wawa was built, there was all hookers down there. So on the way out, I gotta go to Wawa. <laughs> Basically, yeah, you could <laughs> you could get a hooker and a dime bag. I get bag a two point five star <laughs> hooker. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're trying to clean it up. But there's a big cleanup in the area. The the popo, the popo likes to arrest them now. <laughs> yeah, after they after they get that gum job, <laughs> but, uh, let me take my teeth out first. <laughs> <laughs> I lost you. There we go. That's funny shit. I love the Jay Stone show. Me too. So, yeah, it's it's a great thing. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> 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 we won't be on the air, but you can well, come I'm back. Just tape it. We'll have like a fucking <laughs> backlog of. Tapes. You could come over for lunch. We'll you cooking? Crab legs. We'll barbecue and your fucking farty dog over there. <laughs> That's he. <it>. Guess Onia. <laughs> the last time Raven was here, the dog sat right, right underneath his feet and was farting the whole time. Gassed him out. He's like, "What the fuck is that smell?" <laughs> I'm sure you guys remember. So you could go back and listen to that. It's all in the archives at RockMetalTalk.com. So, uh, yeah, I think we've talked about a lot of shit. You're going yeah, back to did. New York um, on Scott's Hopefully frequent flyer. <laughs> oh, Bonnie's his wife. One of the others. I ain't paying for it. <laughs> That's great. That's good. Do you know how many songs you guys are going to do? I always oh, probably, talk about Five Star Hooker. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably 10. 10? 10. 10. Hopefully. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, we'll probably throw a couple covers on there like we always do. Yeah, that's always a tricky thing. Though, I told Scott we should do that. What's that song? Fucking all my friends, they died. Remember that song? Fucking who did that song? Jimmy got arrested. Died. Died. All my friends, they died. I'm like, we do that for like 30 minutes of all the people we know that died in the last fucking 10 years. So yeah, you're not. <laughs> that'll fill out. Jesus so you know, we could like do like five songs in that. <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like a double. Album. It'd be like a double CD. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know when you're getting old, man. It sucks, but you're still rocking. Trying. Trying, having fun, you know? Just. You know, you see that, that old guy that did the Drowning Pool song, and everybody's yeah. going nuts over this guy. There's actually people who are 80 years old that have talent just because he sang Dr- Drowning Pool. Oh. You can see. You know, when I'm 80, I'm going to be listening to metal music. That's never going to change. Exactly. So he, it's not impossible that someone that was 80 years old was listening to Sabbath. You still suck. Yeah. It sounded like crap. And now he's doing Rob Zombie on America's Got Talent. I, I mean, I give the guy credit. He's 80 years old getting up there and doing a metal song. But it's like they were laughing at him. You know what I'm saying? And not with him. But. Yeah. They rave about it, but there's actually people who are in their 80s who can actually sing and have talent. Look at fucking Mick Jagger. I seen some dude today at Caddy's on the beach that had zero talent. <laughs> he had, like, the fucking karaoke machine from hell. He couldn't sing a fucking note. I think he did, like, three fucking notes on his acoustic guitar. Everything was, like, totally programmed. He's probably out there making three, four hundred bucks a fucking day. Probably. On the beach. Everybody's fucking hanging out, drunk, and who the fuck cares? He's got a portfolio. Yeah, whatever. And then my fucking band got to play. I got to sell fucking like 50 tickets at 35 bucks a piece to play a fucking show with like Jackal. Are you kidding me? (laughs) This guy's on the beach fucking schmo, whatever. No talent motherfucker, you know? That's Anybody can go to Guitar Center and buy a fucking karaoke machine. This is true. This is true. And, fucking and those are the people that get paid. The people who bring the, the fucking crowd. No, the people that write the their liquor. own fucking songs right. don't get paid. You know? What was um, some of the highlights at Rock, Oklahoma? Leaving. Leaving. <laughs> <laughs> My hotel room was fucking awesome, man. It was like the pimped out... 
red <laughs> fucking the only thing that wasn't cool is I had to ruin my stage manager. <laughs> but no, but it was fucking it was cool. It was cool. Rock Home was cool. It was definitely cool. I mean, I I'm looking forward to going back next year. I learned a lot of shit for next year to not do the same things as I did this year, but yeah, I was told by pe- certain people that do this, do that, do that, and then I get there, I'm like, eh, I didn't have to do this, didn't have to do that, didn't have to, you know, stay here, didn't have to do that, but now I know. But it was an experience, it was fun, I want to do it again, definitely, for sure. Uh, met a lot of awesome people, a lot of radio shows that, you know, not to shoot you down, but other radio shows. Real radio. <laughs> Real radio shows. <laughs> Actually, and just I'm just saying, but I mean, just met a lot of people, and the, yeah, everybody was awesome. I mean, there wasn't not one bad vibe or anybody who pissed us off or anybody who said we couldn't do what we wanted to do, or you know, I mean, I honestly, I wish our passes were more valid to meet other people. I'd love to right. meet Rob Zombie and shit, Nikki Six, and again, I mean, I met Nikki me, me a million times, but. Just to say hi to him again would have been cool. And they were like, uh, Yeah, well, he's your favorite bass player, right? Well, he's probably, I'm probably his too. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised. (laughs) But I just wanted to say hi, you know? And they were like, You stop there. And I was like, Why? You know? I mean, I just, yeah, I thought we would have more access to that. I always bust the Nikki Six balls when he posts on Facebook. You ever hear the story where. That guy claims to have replaced him for a couple oh, of years. Oh, back in the theater pain tour. When, yeah, 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 Matthew he, Tripe. Yeah, he wore the long sleeves. <laughs> right, saying Says, it wasn't really him. Right, yeah. that he took his place because he was in shit. rehab. Yeah, but it, yeah. it's just funny. It was in so, jail. Right, yeah, something like that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I'll he'll post and I go, "Is that Matthew Tripe?" I'll just write that yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. I know it pisses him off because he's got to read it, but nah, he's nah, got nah. a good radio show. Oh yeah, six a.m. is good. You know. Yeah, yeah, good band, good band. They kick ass, man. They fucking, psh, you kidding me? I love every CD they put out. It's I listen to it a lot. It's just, it's very. Uh, if you know Nikki Six, it's very much his life story. Every six AM song was Motley Crue like one of your favorite bands? Uh, or? You think? I you know you don't know. It might be your favorite bass. No, no, band. no. And Motley Crue is like my all time favorite band ever. Maiden second. Sabbath, third, Cooper, Aerosmith, Sweet. I was going to buy some dude at the record show had every Alice Cooper record. I'm like, fuck, man. I was going to buy every Are you kidding me? One. I watched t- fucking Tommy playing with Alice all the time. I'm like, yeah, killing me, dude. <laughs> you know, from right. Rough Cut, you know, Tommy Hendrickson. Yep, yep. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I mean, just, I'm so envious that he's in Alice Cooper because I love Alice Cooper. <laughs> but Tommy's, Tommy's a cool guy. Cool cat, man. He's playing guitar. I never thought he could play guitar like, as good as he does in that band. I watched him at uh, Ruth Eckett Hall, and I was like, fuck, dude. He could, you know, rip some solos and shit. I thought he was just like a... Yeah, uh, they're coming. Alice Cooper is coming back. Back to, in August. Uh, yeah, August, August yeah. 13th, I think. Yeah. Fucking, I got to work. Can't dude, get a day get off. a new job. I got to get a new job. I know. But uh, Every day Tommy Hendrickson was the first guitar pick I ever got. From Sundance. He was playing with Dora Pesh. Dora Pesh and Warlock. I still got the picks. I remember oh, punching him in the... Oh, we are. Oh, we are. We are. Hitting him in the foot. Oh. Give me a fucking guitar pick. <laughs> oh, we need. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he was on the roof of that bus in that video. Fucking pounding that fucking... And she's still, she's still touring. Yeah, she's My still friend's playing. band just did a couple of shows with He's them. He's doing better than her, though. He's with Alice Cooper making a lot more money yeah. than Dora's making touring. Yeah. Away, so. <laughs> Doesn't Alice Cooper have that female guitar player? Oh, she's fucking hot, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see some. She posts well, every dude, once in a while. Dude, he has three lead guitar players in that band. And then you see him now, and he's like, you would think that he was like, you know, I wonder if that's how Marilyn Manson's going to turn out to be. Is your friend still... Uh, that guy we know still his tour manager. Remember we? God? I think so. Remember yeah. we went to the one show a couple of years ago and. Talk up, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we tried to get backstage. I got backstage. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I always get backstage. <laughs> Raven Blackwell, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's he's copyrighting that. Bitches. bitches. What is he? You gotta put two Z's. <laughs> 
But uh, no, I was backstage hanging out with John Five, whatever. From Arrow, from uh, yeah, Rob, Rob Zombie. Zombie, yeah, because that was the Twins of Evil tour. Yeah, Twins yeah. of Evil. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's cool because he came. He was actually watching the other bands. He was sitting yeah. right by us. But uh, yeah, that was a cool night. I just got to meet Marilyn Manson when uh, he just came through town. He was a trip. I think now Todd's with uh, Night Ranger. Yeah, that's a weird switch, but I guess it's hard to work for Marilyn Manson. I ain't saying nothing. Uh, yeah, I ain't saying shit. Yeah, he'll wanna. He won't want to be. I'm not saying he won't want to see. He's a night ranger and uh, my my longtime friend Carl Devino, who actually God, Carl Devino. He's a uh, sound engineer. Does uh, Rich work for Cheap Trick? One of those guys. Jeff Daly. Jeff. Jeff Jeff's a yeah. Jeff's like a photographer for Cheap Trick, but uh, Carl Devino. He lost my fucking train of thought, dude. Anyway, I fucked you all up. You fucked right. It was me. It was the beer. <laughs> <laughs> the twenty fifth beer today fucking got me derailed. I stumped the Raven Blackwell. <laughs> I stumped the Blackwell. <laughs> stumped the bird. <laughs> That's funny shit. But you were talking about um, we were talking about tour managers. Yeah, no. Uh, he's with a uh, call Devino actually a guy. Recorded actually before Mr. Nasty was Mr. Nasty. We were called Tabitha. Right. And uh, he had a studio in Long Island called Sue's Sound Kitchen. And we went in there and did Dye My Hair and a few other songs at his studio. And he's like, he's a sound, he's on tour with Night Ranger now. He's a sound. The yeah. last time you were here, you were talking about how you wrote some of those songs with Tab. But how did it feel to not be part of it like when they took those songs that's got to be kind of weird no nah, i was cool with it because they always knew that i always knew the door was open for me to come back you know what i mean so even though like i don't know we did what did we, d just say we're gonna do these songs no or? no i was just you know we had songs written in tabitha and uh the band fell apart I went whatever I did. I don't know what I did. I went to Burning Star with Jack and uh, Mike Torelli. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, you know, Miss Nasty formed. I wasn't even part of the band when it first formed. And uh, they put the CD out and, you know, Shaking the Walls and Candy Love and Dye My Hair and a bunch of songs I had a part of writing were on them. And I was like, "Just use them. It's cool." What am I gonna say? I'm not gonna see my friends. Yeah, no, I hear you. At least your music got pressed. I mean, I'm that's just, more than you could say for ninety percent of musicians out there. Whatever, it's all good. I mean, I'm still playing those songs anyway myself with them again. So it's the you know, right. you know what I'm trying to say it's like, what are you gonna do, man? Piss on a fire? You know, it's like whatever, man. Good for you if that helps you get to where you're going to go. It's going to help me in the long run, too. And Did you get the writing credits for it? Or? Nothing. <laughs> that, that's fucked up. No, but Missing Nasty from day one, and I fucking swear to God on this, all songs written by Missing Nasty, whoever's in the band at the time. And that's how we roll. And that's how Five Star Hooker rolls. And that's how the Love Dogs rolls. And that's Take how the credit as a group. The credit as a group. That's All songs written it. by Mr. Nasty. All songs written by Five Star Hooker. All songs written by Love Dogs. Also, you know, right? No, that's how cool. it is. It's not like we don't break it down to you know. This I, guy wrote this, and you wrote this fucking lick, and you wrote the yeah. You know, right when you're working you're in the collectively, band, it's all right. fucking written by that band. Because when I when I had <laughs> Warfly Army and I had the falling out with the guys. The guy wrote the songs with his like, I don't want you playing the songs. I go, all I have to do is really change the music. I mean, the the major part of the songs is what I did with them. I mean, the guitar is important, but I could change that yeah, yeah. and still make the song sound the same. But nah, but that's an easy way to do it. Just yep. one on one. Do it as a group. As a group. Put it out. If it dies, it's done. It's not in the band anymore. The next guy in line. Everything's written by the band. You know, so it's just you know. So there's no bullshit. And... Yeah, because that's probably what starts a lot of problems in well, bands and yeah, You know what? Because, I mean, seriously, if you get a, you know, I played with T.C. Cross in New York. You know T.C.? Yeah, absolutely. 